From the Xavier University Television Studio, this is Xavier News. Your campus, your region, your world. This is Xavier News. A federal court of appeals ruled against reinstating President Donald Trump's ban on travelers from seven predominantly Muslim nations. The ruling came Thursday afternoon by the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. U.S. District Judge James Robart in Seattle issued a temporary restraining order halting the ban last week after Washington State and Minnesota sued. The court found no specific evidence connecting terrorist attacks in the United States to any citizens of the banned nations. After last week's decision to make Cincinnati a sanctuary city, funds for roads, bridges, and other projects could be in jeopardy per White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer. This was the first time the Trump administration had specifically weighed in on this Queen City's decision and standing with immigrants in the wake of the president's executive order. Mayor John Cranley rebuked Spicer's decision Wednesday, stating that Cincinnati is not undermining federal laws and that federal law enforcement handles implementing immigration laws and local police are not required to. Cranley remains uncertain if the policy will hold up under the Trump regime. This week has led to two more controversial confirmations in an already controversial cabinet for President Trump. Betsy DeVos was confirmed as Education Secretary after the Vice President was forced to use his tie-breaking Senate vote for the first time in American history. On Thursday, Alabama Senator Jeff Sessions was sworn in as Attorney General. Both appointments come on the heels of protests against their nominations and wide-range skepticism remains. A village in Butler County has instructed, has instructed by a judge to pay back $3 million worth of speeding citation for their automated traffic cameras. The village cited roughly 45,000 people in 15 months. Judge Michael Oster issued this ruling this past Wednesday, calling the money an unjust enrichment of New Miami. It was ruled back in 2014 by a separate judge. Camera enforcement was unconstitutional. Their officers utilized handheld cameras to now comply with the state law that it must be present when enforcing cameras. According to new research from the National Center for Children in Poverty from Columbia University's School of Public Health, more than 40% of all children live in low-income families, including 5.2 million infants and toddlers under the age of three. Although the poverty rate has dropped while household income per capita increases, over 30 million children are living in families barely able to afford their most basic needs. NCCP Director of Family Economic Security Heather Cobal suggests America has nearly 300,000 more children living near poverty today than at the height of the Great Recession. The popular Mount Lookout restaurant Nectar is set to close on February 26th. Owner Julie Francis stated she is retiring from her owner operator position, but plans remain in the local food scene. These include teaching, conducting personal chef work, and state involved organizations, including Slow Food. Francis has promoted connections between chefs, farmers, diners, and food producers since she opened her first restaurant in 2001 before moving to Mount Lookout Square 12 years ago to open Nectar. Francis is doing one last five-course dinner for her restaurant on February 23rd. The legend of Harambe continues to grow and knows no bounds. A flaming hot Cheeto that looks like the outline of Harambe has now sold for nearly $100,000. After a controversial death in May, Harambe has become a pop culture icon and hero of the internet. The seller turned one Cheeto into what could be a lifetime supply of snack food. A lecture led by co-authors of Jesus and Buddha, Friends in Conversation, will take place in the College Boardroom in Schmidt Hall tonight from 7 to 8.30. Co-authors Paul Nittner and Roger Haight will be on campus tonight and Saturday discussing spiritual practices that ground social engagement. Friday will focus on the dialogue, which is open to the public. Saturday, a workshop will be held. The morning, starting 9 a.m., registration is required. For more information on this event, visit xavier.edu forward slash ISSJ. All right. That's all from the news desk, people. We'll be right back with Cam Stansberry and the Xavier Sports Report.
Hello and welcome Musketeer fans to another beautiful, fantastic winter day here on campus. Well, it's actually a spring day, so everybody get outside and make sure that you enjoy this beautiful weather because it's going to be great this weekend. Welcome everybody to another edition of the Xavier Sports Report. If you're tuning in, we couldn't be more excited to have you with us because I've got some news you might be interested in hearing if you have any interest whatsoever in Xavier basketball. As you may have heard earlier this week, the Musketeers are now officially on a four-game Big East winning streak after their victory here tonight, or here Wednesday night, against DePaul. With star point guard Edmund Sumner on the sidelines for the rest of the season, this team officially belongs to star swingman Trayvon Blewett. I know what you're thinking. As if it wasn't his team already in the first place, Cameron. I know, I get it. He's been the most productive player on this year's team by far. And so much so that Vegas gives him the 11th best odds of any player in the country to take home AP National Player of the Year honors. Bluewood has scored at least 20 points in 13 of Xavier's 26 games thus far, including a Steph Clay performance that saw him go 9 of 11 from deep for 40. 40! against UC. Keep it up, Trey. Keep doing your thing, because if you do, we may be thinking about you and the big 3-0 in the same conversation. Oh yeah, you all remember, right? David West, two-time NBA All-Star, current member of the Golden State Warriors, only National Collegiate Player of the Year in Xavier history. Yeah, he was something, that's for sure. Blew it may need to give him a call before he takes the court tomorrow against the toughest opponent he has seen all season long. Cue Josh Hart and the Villanova Wildcats. Welcome back to CentOS, boys. We couldn't be more excited to have you here at Xavier, to have you guys back in our building. We get to camp out, we get to sell out our arena, and then we get to ball out when we take you guys down for the second year in a row and bring it, Nova we are ready for you, Josh Hart. Trayvon's going to shut you down. Xavier Nation, you all know what you have to do. Be as loud as you can. I'm talking as loud as you possibly can because this is going to be a huge game. I don't care if you're wearing hearing aids. By this time next year, tomorrow is our time. And we will do everything in our power to give our guys the fight. The fight that is required for victory in this epic battle. Finally, the indoor track and field team wraps up their season this weekend at the Speary D Invitational in Geneva, Ohio. If you got nothing to do, maybe drive up to Geneva. Might sound like a good time. The team wraps up a season that saw 12 school records get broken this year. Great job, ladies. You two gents keep up the fabulous work. Last but not least, women's basketball takes on DePaul Tonight in CentOS, Deacons come into the game boasting best offense in the Big East at roughly 81 points per game, having won four straight. Good luck tonight, ladies. We will be cheering for you, as always. Thank you all for tuning in to the Xavier Sports Report. Have a great weekend. Enjoy the game, and let's go X.